Number 48. How does nuclear fission differ from nuclear fusion, and why are both of these processes exothermic? Great question. Let's get down to it, right? So we have nuclear fission, so maybe I'll just say fission, and we have fusion. Now this is going to kind of be like a simplified version of what both of these mean. Now, the main difference between nuclear fission and nuclear fusion, or just fission and fusion, is that they're basically kind of opposites of each other. If you know what one of them is, you'll definitely know what the other one is. The easier one to remember is fusion, because when I hear the word fusion, I think of the word to fuse, right? And if you are fusing something together or two things together, you're fusing them together, you're putting them together, and the, the result is going to be bigger than what you started with. So fusion is when you take small atoms and you fuse them together into a larger atom. Now, if that's what fusion is, can you guess what fission is? Yeah, fission, right? When I think of fission, I think of fizzing. I guess that would be a Z, right? Fizzing out. It's kind of like, you know, I guess when you're fizzing out the bubbles, right, on a, on a soda can, right? They kind of disperse, right? So in this case, it's just the opposite, where you take a larger atom and you turn it into smaller atoms. This I will represent by colors. So for fusion, you have, you have two smaller atoms, whatever they are, right? Just, you know, two, could, chances are fusion is going to happen with hydrogens. So if you have one hydrogen coming together with another hydrogen, they fuse together to make the bigger atom, which is helium. But in this case, we're just going to do colors, right? So you got two smaller ones, you throw them together, and you make one bigger one. Now, I kind of want to make this bigger, but not too big, because we need to still answer the second part, which basically has to deal with, um, you know, the, the products. On the other hand, fission is when you do have a larger atom, and you are you know, bombarding them with some type of particle, and you produce out smaller atoms. So they're complete opposites of each other. Now, I hope that answers the first part. Let me just pull this a little bit closer. Okay. So that's the difference between fission and fusion. Fission is when you have a larger atom, the atom is split into two, and you produce two smaller atoms. The fusion is when you're taking two atoms and fusing them together, and now you get one larger atom. But now, why are both of these processes exothermic, right? Fission has to deal with larger atoms. Think of uranium as probably the, the most um, well-known uh, fission atom that, you know, undergoes fission. And then when we think of fusion, we think of the tiny guys, so helium, Oh, sorry, hydrogen and hydrogen coming together to make a helium. Now, uranium is, for fission, you're taking a large amount, right? And generally, fission is known to be exothermic, right? If we're talking about uranium, we're talking about, you know, large atoms, and fission is what is undergone when, you know, we, we just had the, the movie, What Just Came Out, Um what was it? Oppenheimer. That's right. So fission was that, that whole reaction, right? The atomic bomb. So that what is what was basically happening here. And as we've seen, if anybody of you watched the movie, I tried to get tickets. Long story short, I tried to get tickets to the only iMac, what is that, 70 millimeter? Uh, close to me, which uh, was not very close. But every time that I tried... I don't know. I just couldn't get any tickets. And the tickets that, you know, they were available, they were all the way, all the way, either all up front. And I said, absolutely not. I'm already scared half to death. Um, 
but also I don't want to lose my hearing. Or it's all the way on the sides. So unfortunately, I still haven't seen that movie. But um, anyway, so yeah, uh, Manhattan Project, uh, you know, the atomic bomb, all of that is fission. And obviously, from those movies, is very exothermic. It is going to be releasing a lot of energy. Exothermic means that you are releasing energy into the atmosphere. Atmosphere. Now, on the flip side, fusion is also uh, releasing energy into the atmosphere. Chances are it a lot of fusion gets its uh, energy from the sun, and it it will produce a lot of energy that gets released into the atmosphere. These are both exothermic reactions. But now the question is, why are they both ex exothermic, right? You would think that since they are opposites of each other, one would be exothermic and the other one's got to be endothermic. Now just know that exothermic always means that your energy is going to be on the product side. But this goes back to, this goes back basically to Albert Einstein's theory of relativity, right? E equals mc squared, where if there is a change in mass, where does that mass go? It doesn't just poof like a magician and just disappear. The mass has to be counted for somehow. And it turns out that in real life, right, it's not a perfect theoretical life as much as I would like to think it is, but life isn't perfect. So chances are that whatever the mass that you had on the reactant side isn't going to add up exactly to the mass of the two smaller atoms on the right side. And for fusion, the total mass on the left side does not or will not equate to the total mass on the product side. And it turns out that for both of these, your products are always going to be less mass than what you started with. It's just, you know, it's just life, right? You always will start off with the more amount of mass. And as this process goes along, you lose some mass. Same thing here. The mass of the helium is less than the addition of the hydrogens in this case. So the idea is since these products are less, where does that mass go, right? It's got to go somewhere. It doesn't just poof, you know, leave, leave the earth. It's got to get converted into something. If it's not an actual physical mass, it's got to be converted into something. And that something is energy. The energy is basically the converted mass, the converted lost mass. Same thing here. And that's how you get conservation of mass on both sides, that the energy is all of your converted lost mass. And now you have the conservation of energy on both sides. So that's why they're both exothermic. And with that, that answers this question. I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Now, since we talked about, you know, fission and Oppenheimer, I'm going to try to get back on that. Um, if you've watched it, please let me know because, you know, I enjoy, you know, reading your comments. And if you have any favorite movies or any favorite TV shows, let me know because I love watching, uh, I, I'm a big TV buff. I love TV, probably more than movies. Um, but any recommendations are always welcome. Uh, thank you so much for viewing the video. I hope this helps you out. Let me know in the comments. Um, and I hope you're having a great day. Okay. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.